Thanks, Corinne. So, hello, everyone. Uh, the topic, as uh, you know, the panelists have just um, uh, mentioned, what's new? Uh, it's all about microbiology lean lab assessment that we recently did with Northeast Laboratories um, in U.S. The agenda that we have laid out for our webinar today is, first of all, uh, I will, I'm going to talk about briefly about workflow optimization. Uh, then we'll proceed and uh, we'll uh, talk about uh, Northeast Laboratories, which is a testing service, and uh, Kate, uh, the manager and director over there, uh, will be introducing Northeast Lab. Uh, we'll also talk about the lab's view of workflow assessment, the work that was accomplished, and the benefits that the lab gained after implementing our suggested solutions. The technical highlights of workflow solutions will also be discussed. And in the end, we plan to wrap up with any question and answers. Introduction to workflow optimization. So let me start with a quote from Parkinson's. Uh, the, the law is, uh, Parkinson states that work expands so as to fill the time that's available for its completion. Let's put it in other words. In a laboratory, the demand among a resource tends to expand to match the supply of the resource. And I have seen this from time to time, you know, as soon as I walk in any lab, it's the same situation. Um, what you see here on the slide are few of the challenges that laboratories across the globe face on a day-to-day -day basis. My question to you all here is, what is your approach to meet these challenges? On which liver do you plan to act? Really, are you interested in maximizing throughput? What about reducing waste? And waste can be visible and waste can be invisible. Shortening turnaround times. Is, short, is turnaround time important to your internal customer or external customer? Some of the other challenges are the timely reporting of relevant information and adhering to quality standards, also increasing regulatory compliance. As far as the benefits of workflow optimizations, these benefits are achieved using five-step approach to workflow optimization, which includes a complete lab performance assessment. That's where we initially start. And then moving on to step number two is developing a lean roadmap, which is tailored specifically to the area of focus. We do take into consideration the workloads, the resources, the organization, the productivity, as well as the turnaround time. 
and combining the innovative laboratory automation with breakthrough and proven techniques, we are able to provide our customers with increased efficiency, reduced turnaround time, increased quality, reduced error and waste, increased productivity, and few others that you see listed here. Okay, I would like to uh, call on Kate. Uh, who's the uh, supervisor, manager, director at uh, Northeast Laboratory? Yes, Kate. Kate McMahon is our guest speaker today. She has been working with Northeast Lab since 2004 as a food microbiology an analyst and eventually a technical director of the food testing laboratory in Portland, Maine. She took two years off from working to receive a master's in biology from the University of Southern Maine and she resumed the work at the new Portland Division in Northeast Labs in 2009 and was promoted to the Technical Director of the Food Microbiology Lab in 2010. What Kate is going to do is, um, is provide us with some information about her company and what, how and why she wanted a, a lean workflow assessment done and how it improved um, her efficiency throughout her laboratory. Welcome, Kate. Hi there. Thank you, Corinne. I'll be briefly introducing uh, Northeast Laboratory Services, our mission statement, um, our services, and then why we decided to go through with a lean audit. Um, Northeast Laboratories Services is a full service accredited laboratory providing a wide range of analytical chemistry and microbiology testing. Uh, we have a commitment to offer complete support to our clients and um, we believe our clients expect and deserve accurate and reliable test results, and as well as quick test results at a competitive cost, which of course brings to mind uh, the lean audit, uh, why we needed to make sure we were running as efficiently as possible. You can advance the slide, Mohammed. Uh, we do have two locations in Maine. Uh, we have one in Portland, Maine, and a location in Winslow, Maine. Um, we have environmental chemistry testing in Winslow, as well as a water quality laboratory, as well as a custom and standard media manufacturing um, uh, service where we uh, we produce uh, media media products, uh, cl clinical products to pharmaceutical companies, etc. Now, in Portland, we do food and water testing. I'll actually uh, talk a little bit more about that on the next slide. Um, so we are committed. Uh, okay, so the Portland division is where we do the food microbiology here, uh, indicator organisms, pathogens, nutritional labels, shelf lives, anything involving microbiology uh, for food service and food processing uh, companies in New England. And we decided to go, th uh, go through the lean audit. We have a fairly new building. Uh, the building is older, but we moved into this building not too many years ago, and we, we set it up kind of quickly, uh, getting ready to, to get the testing going. And, you know, we realized that we probably did not set it up perfectly, and this is, uh, it was a great opportunity to be able to have Mohammed come in, and we actually, we changed quite a few things around, and everything's running very smoothly and uh, more efficiently. And you can advance to the next slide. And I believe Mohammed will be taking over. Yeah, thanks, Kate. Thank you. So in regards to the objective and focus of the assessment um, with NEL, um, basically the whole uh, assessment was divided into three parts. Number one, the workplace organization, which included standardization of work and implementing visual control. This was the very first step. And then we went ahead, we looked at the people or staffing side to ensure work effectiveness and quality at the source was achieved. This was an important piece of uh, the assessment. Um, once the gaps were identified um, and, you know, moving ahead, um, we created a cellular flow in the laboratory, which really significantly reduced the sample batch size 
and also created a pull versus a push system. We used uh, lean tools. Uh, one of the lean tools used was the lean assessment matrix, which was used to identify existing process improvement gaps. Um, other lean tools such as spaghetti chart, logic flow diagrams, standardized work charts were also used during the workflow assessment. In the end, we were able to build a roadmap which uh, significantly you know, helped NEL to transform based on their specificities and the needs. Okay, uh, I would like to bring to notice what I usually see in microbiology labs are there exist about eight types of non-value added activities that happen in almost all micro labs. And Lean is an extremely powerful tool in identifying and eliminating these eight wastes, which range from defects, overproduction, waiting. It could be the idle time created when samples or information or people or equipment, anything that's not ready or that's just waiting for the um, upstream process to finish their work. The other wastes are not utilizing employees' knowledge or skill or abilities. I've seen that as well in many labs. Transportation, inventory, motion, and extra processing are some of the other significant ways that can be eliminated. The whole focus being improving turnaround time, identifying bottlenecks and delays in the process. So moving forward, let's discuss some of the technical highlights of the workflow solution. Initially, in the beginning, we look at the current analysis, the current situation of exactly how many samples do the lab receive, what kind of samples they are, what's the percentage like, are these samples being, uh, you know, uh, what time are they being received, is there volatility happening in the way samples are received. All these things are monitored, observed, and analyzed uh, using vigorous Six Sigma statistical tools as well as some lean tools. An initial observation analysis, which included the spaghetti chart or the spaghetti diagram, really helped us identify the extra motion that happened in the lab. And this is, again, part of the current uh, um, analysis, the current situation, or the current uh, uh, method of doing things. Here, as you can see, the samples were received sample reception what happened, and then the sample reached the lab. There was a lot of movement happening, as you can see. Uh, samples were moving around all throughout the lab. And in the end, that's where after the instrumentation, the, the, the report was generated and emailed or faxed to the customer. Now, looking at the current situation and identifying the extra transportation and extra waste in the process, a future state uh, spaghetti chart was developed, which really significantly reduced the amount of motion, extra transportation, and other lean ways uh, from happening. When we were doing the building the spaghetti chart, there were five key activities or categories that we focused on. How much of technical activity is currently happening in the lab? To what level, to what extent? Is there any variation between staff to staff, between shift to shift? Is the process on target or is it moving in the wrong directions? How much admin work is happening? Is there any barcoding happening or is it manual work? How much of duplication is happening uh, when, when data is being recorded? and then movement, walking, and other activities. Now, other activities, it, that's very tricky, and there's a lot of observation that, that needs to, a lot of data needs to be collected to identify this, because these are the tasks that just go unnoticed. Examples are training, you know, they could be meetings or queries or just cleaning or telephone calls. Uh, but again, uh, using lean eyes and lean tools, um, it was very, uh, 
helpful to identify the other activities and document those. And here is the result of the initial observation result. Uh, we, we, we found that about 22% of activities happening in this lab were technical, whereas about 40% of the admin work was, was existed in the lab. And there was about 10 to 21 percent of walking and movement happening, followed by 8 percent of other activities. Now, once these lean wastes were identified, uh, a robust as well as a roadmap was, was laid out, which helped to eliminate and remove these lean wastes from the process. A capacity versus workload assessment was also done using Six Sigma tools. Um, and Kate uh, did supply us with about a year's worth of data, especially the timestamps and, you know, uh, what type of samples were received and, uh, you know, where they were received from and how they were received, um, what was the turnaround time, things like that. So we took all these, all this data analyzed and then we were able to identify the existing gaps. Now the circles, the gray circles that you see in here are the actual gaps that were identified and that helped us to come up with a, a tailored solution so that the lab can improve from good to great. Now once all this motion was identified, a future state spaghetti was built in. As you can see, I'm gonna go back to the previous slide here see a lot of motion happening, um, you know, and the, and the blue line and the yellow and the colors are just to differentiate the different types of samples that were being tested and that were moved about, moved around the lab. And this is the future state. See how much motion and, uh, you know, just by moving simple things around and having, creating those, that cellular layout, uh, we were able to reduce a lot of noise. The impact of the workflow assessment in a nutshell is this lab, you know, we worked on the staff allocation, properly allocating the existing staff to meet the existing demand as well as the forecasted demand of the samples. Uh, the lab was able to improve turnaround time and there was less work in process. Now work in process is all the samples or the plates or, uh, you know, anything that's waiting on the workstation to be tested or to be talked, to be logged in, that is work in process. And this, this really helped increase motivation as well in the lab. Uh, once, you know, the, the, all the waste was removed and the process was streamlined and optimized. There was a lot of reduction in non-value added tasks and better space utilization which improved quality as well as uh, improved the morale. Okay, moving on to next. As you see on this slide, um, when we followed up um, after a couple months and we did a follow-up assessment, uh, we were able to see a 22% increase in efficiency and 80% reduction in lean waste specifically in the areas of motion and transportation. Uh, there was about uh, significant time that was freed up uh, for staff to perform work of higher customer value. And Biomario Performance Solution, we use Lean Six Sigma approach to maximize productivity while reducing errors. As we have seen in this case study, we provide a roadmap which really help you freeing capacity to address increasing testing volume. And we do this, this is a very tailored approach. Uh, we come in, we do the assessment, and it's, it's very rapid, like it's a week long assessment that initially starts with collection of data, gathering information, the discovery phase, um, and then we measure everything, we analyze all the data that we have received, and we provide you with the right suggestions and solutions that will help you improve effectiveness as well as efficiency in your laboratory. 
turnaround time is a critical metric that we have helped a lot of our customers improve. And in the end, you know, your benefits are really smart use of all your laboratory resources, whether it's your staff time, whether it's the, the money that's being spent right now, or whether it's the, the, the time that you want to save. In the end, it, everything, the solution that we provide dramatically raises satisfaction levels among customers and staff. We also provide Kaizen services, and Kaizens are usually done after the assessment. If a chronic issue is identified or if a long-term uh, solution is identified, then we come back and, you know, uh, not only a black belt who facilitate this session, but also we have the subject matter expert, uh, the microbiologist, who joins us for these Kaizen services. And together, having the process expert and the technical expert, we formed a team inside your laboratory. Um, it's a two to three day event, and there is some transformational improvement uh, that the lab have benefited through the Kaizen services. In the end, really it's all about the workflow redesign, which is deployed using Lean and Six, Six Sigma approach. And like I mentioned, it's everything is rapid implementation. It's a four-day commitment. Uh, we are in. We are in on, in on Monday. We form the team, and by Thursday, we run a pilot project. We collect new data. We analyze, and we show the improvement. That Thank we you. come to an end. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Green. Thank you, Mohammed and Kate. I'd like to move on to questions to our presenters. Um, it appears that we already have received um, one question that was typed in in the Q&A session. I'm going to ask Melissa, our, our operator, to open the line, and or you can also type them in the question and answer se session, and I will read them to our um, to Kate and Mohammed. Um, I have the first question that is here, and it was um, from um, oh, I'm sorry, Patel is the last name, and the question is posed as, um, what is an LIS alert system? And feel free, Kate and Mohammed, to both answer that question. Sure. Um, LIS alert system is a laboratory information management system. It's part of your LIMS system. It's an added feature. Um, that you that usually helps in alerting uh, you know when when uh, the, the samples uh, are, are being uh, uh, there's overstock of inventory or uh, the, the samples are waiting too long in the system an alert is sent out immediately when a critical number is reached so that's the LIS alert system it's an added feature basically to Linux. okay I received another question, um, and it was from Chelsea, and she says, can you explain what work in progress is again? That's a very good question. Uh, work in progress, also known as WIP, is a manufacturing term. Almost if anyone's coming from manufacturing, they should be very familiar. But for the service industries, it's a, it's a newer term. Uh, you know, but it's uh, highly used in Lean and Six Sigma world. Uh, basically, work in progress is uh, in a microbiology laboratory, when you receive samples, if those samples are sitting on the desk waiting for the technician or the analyst to log in those samples, that's your work in progress. If your plates are sitting there, you know, on, on the table for the technician to arrive and read the plates, whether it's in the morning or in the afternoon, that's your work in progress. And that is basically just waiting. Waiting is idle time. I mean, the end customer is not paying us uh, for anything that's waiting. They want their, their product to move from one step of the process to the other step. And if, if you're waiting, and again, this creates bottleneck uh, in your process. Uh, if the uh, downstream process is much faster and efficient, uh, then there is lag time. 
um, you see these spikes, you know, like uh, uh, the person who, who works faster, finishes his work faster, and now he has nothing to do because he's waiting on the upstream process to send more work for him. And that's basically a, the, the whole working pro, pro process is evaluated, analyzed, and then uh, we, we provide you with solutions. Okay. Um, operator, do we have a call-in question at this time? And just a reminder, if you have a question on the phone, please press star 1. Star 1 if you have a question. And if you have a question, please state your name before posing your question. And I'll take just a moment to allow everyone to press star 1 if they have a question. Okay, and I do have another question that was posed um, on the Q&A written in, and it was by Jerry, and it says, do you charge by the, s the square foot scope or services or hourly? Okay. Um, re really, the service is tailored. You know, there's a lot of... Um, um, things that are considered. We have an initial meeting with you and we discuss the opportunity that's in front of us. And looking at the laboratory size, the instruments, the staffing present, the amount of, the volume of samples that you receive, many uh, uh, factors that are looked at and then the price is, uh, you know, uh, based on mutual understanding, uh, we, we decide the price. That's how we work. Do we have a call-in question yes. at this time? Yes, okay. we do. Go ahead. Caller, your line is open. Please state your name. Hi, this is Tina from the Environmental Health Lab for the state of Alaska. I had a question as far as, you know, the making changes to improve the efficiency, movement, and et cetera. Um, it seems to me during those times when you're making those changes or working on those changes, you know, relocating people, instruments, practices, um, that there that would be what, I guess I don't know if I want to call it downtime, but, you know, time taken up for training and the, uh, the work on that. Do you have any sort of um, statistics as far as when, you know, the cost of, the, of that, if you will, downtime is going to even out or um, exceed the, you know, the lost time, I'm sorry, the made-up time in the future would be, uh, I don't want to say this, uh, made-up time in the future is going to offset the time used to move forth with that process. Yeah, that's, that's another very good question, a very common question that many of my uh, clients and customers ask. Again, change is, uh, you know, not easy. I mean, when we talk about change, uh, my recommendation, again, is uh, really we need to uh, do a pilot phase before we fully implement the suggestion or solution. So you need to pick the critical area where you see the significant waste you know, it's an 80-20 rule. You apply the Pareto, and then you identify the place or the focus area where you want to first implement this change. And you go ahead, you implement the change for a couple of days. It's a week. And you see, uh, you, you, you monitor the metrics, and when you see the change, you, you go ahead and you fully implement. Now, at the same time, um, there should be, there is, Downtime. I do agree there is downtime, but we have to decide how much of downtime can we can is acceptable because our customers really, I mean, they they they're sending in samples and they want results. There's a turnaround time that needs to be met. So uh, again, I, I highly suggest don't fully implement it because that's when your people will overwhelm and they will feel the pressure. But if you go step by step, it's called the Kaizen approach. Uh, taking small steps, you know, it's not possible to eat the whole elephant in one bite, uh, but you, you go step by step, and uh, once you see the results, uh, at the same time, you're getting the buy-in from not only from your people, but also from upper management when they see the numbers or the metrics change on the dashboard. That's the, the ideal way to approach uh, with, with the change and improvement. I hope I'm uh, hoping I'm, I've answered your question now. Well, right, uh, yes, uh, Mohan, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, that's very good because um, Rachel has pretty much the same uh, kind of a question like that. She says, can you explain a little bit more about the Kaizen service? Yeah, Kaizen is basically a Japanese term, and uh, Kaizen means, uh, you know, to improve or to change. Um, in service industries, Kaizen is used a bit different than in the manufacturing world. Um, the way uh, Biomario or use uh, Kaizen is uh, uh, usually Kaizens for us are done after the assessment. You know, if, if you want a major change to happen and if you are looking for the people buying um, and you want change to really happen and be acceptable and adaptable, that's when we suggest the Kaizen. And like I said, in the, during the Kaizen, uh, myself, the black belt process improvement person comes in, along with the technical person, the microbiologist, who look at your SOPs and your quality and your compliance. Uh, we, we form the team. The team is usually a size of four to six people. I highly suggest the team should not be more than six people on any project. Six is the, the final number. And then uh, once the team is formed, and, and this team, I uh, again prefer to be very cross-functional. Uh, we want people from workstation. We want people from management. We want people from admin work so that we get different ideas. And, you know, any idea that we get is not a bad idea. It uh, really helps us to build the solution. And the benefit of Kaizen is ultimately the solution in the end is coming from your people. It's not the consultant or the black belt walking in your lab and providing you with the, do this, do that, do this, do that. No, that's not the case in a Kaizen. We brainstorm. We use specific tools, uh, you know, like... Uh, uh, silent brainstorming, like uh, impact analysis, uh, uh, stakeholder analysis, all these tools are used to come up with the right solution, which is, again, the, your whole team owns the, the solution. So it's easier for them to adapt and take it to the next level. Thank you, Mohammed. Um, do we have another call-in question, Melissa? No questions right now. If you do have a question, please press star 1. Star 1 if you have a question. I'll go on to the next question that was just uh, sent to me. It was by Chelsea again. Uh, it says, can you review the graph which shows the workflow per hour and what the gray circles were? Mohammed, you're more than welcome to move back the slide and so that you can okay. get that. Okay, sure, sure, yeah. So let me go back to that graph. That's the capacity and workload graph right here, this one. Uh, so yeah. in here, yeah, the red line. I think line you have like a pointer too, so if you want to use a pointer, go ahead. Okay, I, I'm, I'm fine. I'm okay. Okay. The red line that you see, the red margin line, is the percentage capacity that's present in the lab. So that's your staffing, basically. Now you see a dip around 12 to 1 p.m., that's the time when the staff is going for lunch. Um, the green is when all the sample preparation is happening, the yellow and the green area, and you see a big spike right around 9 to 11 o'clock. And the reason is, in this case, the samples, a big chunk of samples were received earlier during the day at around 9 a.m., the the you know the, the shipment comes in and uh, they get busy and uh, the work kind of exceeds the staff and that's where we see okay now maybe uh, we need more staff and then the blue circles those are the gaps that exist in the system um, when i say the blue circles, do those are the opportunities for improvement that's where we suggested, okay, since we see, you know, no, no less activity is happening in the lab, there is some lab setup time. Maybe the lab can prepare, do some housekeeping, you know, uh, if there are any um, monitoring of fridges or logging in or calibration work. Those are the housekeeping or the behind the scene. Anything that can be done offline, that's when that, those are the times uh, those activities should be completed because once that 9 a.m. time hits, the samples are received, 
and now our staff are busy logging in samples, doing the sample preparation, and testing. And the purple is basically all the reading that's happening in the lab. And reading was happening throughout the day as the samples were, as the plates were coming out from the incubator. Uh, from time to time, there was reading that was noticed throughout the day happening. So, I mean, in a nutshell, the bottom line is this uh, kind of assessment really helps us to identify where the gaps exist in forms of uh, time black holes. And once those time black holes are identified, how we can better utilize this time uh, slots uh, that exist throughout the day. And in some that, I mean, every lab has a different graph. We have done so many assessments so far, not one graph was similar to the other graph. I mean, your, your lab can have a totally different uh, uh, graph based on the data, based on the type of activity, based on your staffing, based on the volume of the samples. Uh, all these things uh, go into building this uh, graph. Okay. Okay, um, I have another question here, and I believe you already mentioned this, but we'll just touch upon it real quick. Um, how many team members do you consider for a lean project? Four to six. Okay. Uh, do we have any call-in questions, Melissa? There are no phone questions right now. Okay. Um, the next question is, how do you convince employees that changing the laboratory workflow is beneficial? And this one was posed by, this question was posed by Krista. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so um, I, I think I already answered this question. Um, you really need to get buy-in. And the way you get buy-in is, first of all, you create, you know, the, the burning desire. You know, that there should be a burning edge, burning platform already in the lab that now change is necessary. We need to have that change. And once uh, you, you, you want that change, you motivate your staff, you create the culture, uh, and you share the vision. What kind of change do you want with your employees? Uh, in some labs, I notice management doesn't share that information with employees, and employees are left in the dark. So they don't want to change because they, it's an order. They don't like orders. Once you share the vision with them and you show them the path and you need to implement on a small pilot scale. Uh, that kind of uh, helps getting the buy-in. Uh, you need to uh, identify key process indicators, which you will be measuring before and after. And once you see significant improvement in these KPIs, you're going to share this uh, improved KPIs with your employees. And for sure, they themselves will notice on, on the pilot scale and once you, you have that small buying, it's, I, what, it's what I call the critical mass uh, buying. Once you have that, it spreads like fire. And, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's a matter of time, and uh, you can go ahead and fully implement the suggested solution. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to ask uh, how it went with Kate. How did, um, how did she go ahead about with the, change and convince your employees with the lab workflow and did they find it beneficial? I mean, how did how did that change go over for you, Kate? The change was, was very uh was was very simple. I think the analysts and the analysts were involved too with the audit. You know, they were asked their opinion about certain things and uh they knew, you know, I think they knew that they were walking around a little more than they needed to be, and they're on their feet all day. So anything that anything that takes them, you know, a few less steps is hugely beneficial to someone who's basically on their feet all day long. Um, I don't think it's hard to convince them to, to change, for example, where they're weighing out a sample, um, a lot of things like that. It's just they're they're fine with it. It's really not that difficult. People who've been doing the same thing for 20 years, they might, you know, they might question why are they why are they move to the other side of the room. They've been doing this for 20 years, you know. But if if you show them, if you actually show them the graphs and you have this audit done, and you show them uh, the workflow graphs, I think that's what got me is that you actually it's good to see where you're actually walking all all day long, um, how many steps you're taking, and how easily that's corrected with just with just a few changes, really. Um, and and it, I just I we didn't really have any issues with that. Everyone was was very 
very supportive of all the ideas that uh, Mohammed had. And uh, we've implemented pretty much all of them and very happy, very happy with the outcome. Great. Um, I have another question here for you, Mohammed. Uh, it says, so would you come on site to give a quote? Sure. Give us a call. Yep. Okay. Um, and then another one. Um, yeah. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to. Okay. Um, Michael has this question. We have a small purpose built, design built lab focused exclusively on in house testing. The primary bottleneck we run into is result entry and action. This is usually due to availability of result log files. Can a lean audit coordinate with our IT department to iron out these wrinkles? Okay, that's uh, that's a good question. But you know, I would like to take this question offline because uh, there, are, there are many significant factors that come into play, and, and it's very hard to answer this uh, in a sentence or two. Um, you know, they would. Uh, I would like to discuss with this person offline and uh, really understand what the issues are and what kind of uh, factors are going playing around. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's just uh, optimizing those factors and uh, helping out uh, with the solution. Okay. Um, do we have any call-in questions at all? No, ma'am. Okay, so the next one is, once we move to the lean laboratory format, how would we better be able to determine our capacity? So once you move into a lean, can you repeat that, please? It says, once we have moved to the lean laboratory format, how would we be better, how would we better be able to determine our capacity? The best way was... is to do a, yeah, yeah, I, I, I think I understood, uh, but uh, uh, the, see, the best way is to uh, really do a before and after analysis. And that's why I, I highly recommend that first step it will be your assessment. Uh, uh, just don't go ahead and start implementing any solution. You know, uh, first understand what the problem is. Uh, the current situation should not only be understood, but also documented in forms of numbers. Uh, then once you, you have uh, all the, the relevant information in regards to your current state, current state you go ahead, you implement your uh, new suggested solutions, and then you uh, record or go ahead, collect newer data and you analyze those, and uh, you will see the difference yourself, uh, the increased capacity. Okay. And it looks like the last question we have is, have you worked with administrative cost-saving projects? Can you give us an example? An administrative? We have worked with uh, helping out uh, admin-related work as well, because uh, you know now we have lean accounting, um, we have a couple projects on the go. Uh, I'm working on another, uh, it's basically like a customer service hotline project, uh, you know, that's more of a support service project as well. So, uh, you know, basically it's, it's uh, Lean and Six Sigma can be applied in any, anywhere. And uh, it's all about process improvement. Again, uh, to define a process, it's all about the inputs and outputs. Uh, op Understanding the inputs and optimizing the uh, output and monitoring the output uh, is, is what we do. So uh, from a process perspective, yes, I think it's doable, administrative uh, cost-saving project as well. Um, if you are interested specifically in, uh, in a particular example, uh, we can provide you to contact uh, us uh, offline, please. Um. Here. I'm looking to see. I think there's a couple. And then um, I think one person, I don't know if this would be, Kate, would you be able to answer a little bit about the examples? It says, um, or do you think that wouldn't be applicable, uh, Kate and Mohammed, on that last question that was just posed? I can reread it again if you want. Um. 
It says, um, once we have moved to the lean laboratory format, how would we be better able to determine our capacity? So I think what they're asking is, um, after you changed over to the lean lab, were you able to increase your data or increase your um, testing or and bring in more clients or did it like bring, you know, have more time on your hands that you were able to get more projects done? Right. So so that kind of goes along with, with the lean audit. It does, obviously, it does free up some time um, overall for everyone, hopefully, and that would be that would that would be the one of the biggest uh outcomes of an audit it would be the 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 ability to take on more work because you have freed up time and that just kind of goes hand in hand uh with with that okay yeah yeah sounds good do we have any other questions at this time not on the phone if, oh, okay none on the phone okay Okay, I guess um, these have been some really great questions, um, and I would like to thank all of your questions. I'm going to go ahead and close this Q&A period. For any additional questions that should arise, feel free to contact Mohammed or Kate. Um, Mohammed has his uh, information listed at the end of the presentation. Um, I also, for think also this will be available. The recording will be available for on-demand um, viewing if you wish to look at it again. On behalf of our guests, uh, Mohammed and Kate, as well as the folks at Bill Mary U, my name is Corinne Graff, and we wish you a good day. Thank you for joining us and taking the time to view today's presentation. This does conclude today's conference, and thank you for your participation.